Testing, testing, testing.
Allah
bro, this is way too tall. <laughs> Uh, we did the Apache tribe. Um, the Apache lived in northern Mexico, Arizona, and New Mexico, and Texas. Um, they are semi nomadic, and that's where they live. Um, semi nomadic means that um, half of like, the year is my hunting, and the other half is like staying permanent in one place. Uh, the homes that they lived in were Wikifus and Teepees. Uh, the Wikipoos were a more permanent home, and the teepees were more temporary and could be moved easily. And um, the teepees frame was made from long poles covered with buffalo hide. And this is an example of uh, the houses, the Wikipoos. What were those made of? Uh, bark and grass. Um, the Apache had a variety of food, but their main source was uh, corn and meat from the buffalo. They also gathered berries and acorns, and they also ate deer and rabbits. Um, the Apache made many types of crafts, and um, some of those crafts were basket making, beading, and pottery. The basket making was made out of mulberry, willow, cottonwood, and devil's claw. And um, they decorated things with beads and some beadworks included loom, weaving, stringing, and netting. And um, all of these methods are still strong in the Apache culture today. And that's an example of pottery. Most of their clothing was made out of leather or buckskin. The women wore buckskin dresses and the men wore shirts and breech clothes. Some days they would decorate their clothes with fringes, beads, feathers, and shells. They also wore uh, leather shoes called moo cautions. Uh, the traditional Apache religion was based on the belief in the supernatural and the power of nature. Nature explained everything in life for the Apache people. Apache religion was expressed in poetic terms has, and has passed from generation to generation. And a, fa a famous Apache person is Geronimo. Um, he was a naturally gifted hunter. He, um, at age 17, he had already led four successful um, raiding operations. He fell in love with a woman, and they had three children. And while on a trading trip, they all died from um, Mexican soldiers attacking this camp. Um, and uh, they were all like, put as like prisoners and they were moved to reservations. He like escaped the reservations and then they started fighting in wars um, and then they surrendered and he was sent to a prison camp in Florida and then in Alabama and then finally in Fort Sill, Oklahoma and he spent a total of 27 years in prison. Um, and then another famous person was Mangus Coloradus. Um, he was an unusually tall, striking man. He became the chief in 1837, um, and they would uh, attack supply trains. Um, and in 1848, when gold was discovered where they lived, um, they, they were like forced to, like they were being betrayed, and they fought and then they they were captured and then they were trying to escape he was killed um, some of their music was singing together in their language they also used musical instruments such as drums flute and rattles drums and rattles are especially used during dances while flutes are part are particularly associated with love songs uh, an important, an important art game was archery. It was a competition sport, and the bow and arrow was their main weapon. Work. The Apache men were hunters, and they were in charge of hunting animals and bringing home fresh meat. The men were also warriors and would protect the, and protect the women. 
The women would find berries and gather stuff for their families, and the children sometimes helped the men work on the farm. Um, Apache in the U.S. The Apache in the U.S. fought in war. Um, the Apache were led by Geronimo. Um, that's a picture of Geronimo. And the Apache were outmatched by the United States. Um, they surrendered and lived on, because they lived on a mine where there were silver and gold. Um, the Americans held them prisoners in Florida and Alabama and then in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And they lived there for a long time. The Apache did not traditionally use money, but they did trade, so they didn't have a money system. Uh, their ceremonies were focused on cure curing, hunting and gathering rituals, and obtaining personal power and protection. Okay. Nice job! Okay. All right! Okay, based off of what they said, raise your hand if your tribe has any similarities with the Apache. Some of you? Okay. Anybody in the South... Um, in the Southwest, like the Ute and all of those, I bet there's a lot of similarities there. So be thinking that as we go through this. How is this different from my tribe? Um, the Apache um, were not matri a, ma a matriarchy, right? So they're kind of different than a lot of the tribes that you guys studied. Um, Mingo people, are you ready? Yes, you are. <laughs> Come on, Dewey. <laughs> Let's give him a little encouragement. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Who's going first? Um, our tribe is the Mingo tribe. They ate um, corn, beans, squash, wild berries, nuts, and herbs. And the men hunted deer and elk. And they also fished. And here is a fish. <laughs> and they cooked um, stew, cornbread, and soups on a stone hearth. Well, the men were usually away from home to hunt for food and resources. The women would plant crops and vegetables, and the children would help around the house. Uh, the Mingo tribe helped the, the British and the French in the Revolutionary War, but um, uh, they didn't like give them something for their help and uh um so they lost and they lost their land and uh they trying to help um the british because if the british won um they might have their land back the mingo have a religion called gaoio this religion is also known as longhouse religion the creator of this religion was the chief, healer, and prophet of the Mingo. His epithet was Ganyo Dayo. Um, they use a form of money, like they trade um, corn and other uh, stuff like food. Um, they also use wampum beads. They craft them out of white and purple shell beads, um, they're important in um, their art culture. The Mingo people lived in wigwam homes. Um, they were built from like trees and bark. They were like log homes, but they were much smaller and they were shaped like a dome. <laughs> the Mingo tribe um, favorite instruments were drums and a flute. Um, the drums were made um, they had water in it, and the they played beautiful songs to get their girlfriend's attention. <laughs> the Mingo's clothes were ma mostly made of animal hides. The clothes were decorated with feathers, porcupine quills, and glass beads. The women would wear a brief cloth, and the men had no shirt throughout the year. 
Only when it got cold, the men would wear leggings and cloaks. Here's some pants. And cloak. The Mingo celebrates six major ceremonies, which are green corn, maple planting, strawberry planting, harvesting, and midwinter or New Year's festivals. Most of these ceremonies are for tribal affairs, farming, and other stuff. Sometimes they do it to celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, one famous person from the Mingo tribe was Chief Logan. He was born in Pennsylvania and um, took revenge on like the murderous family by like by killing someone. And then um, his actions um, cost the war and. One of his speeches is like the Logan's Lament. Um, this is the wigwam home. That's a water drum. And here's some corn, the Mingo people, Chief Logan, and some beans, and the buffalo. Nice. Good job, guys. Great job. So impressed. This wigwam was a journey, let me tell you. I watched this in many different stages, so it turned out really good. Nice job, guys. All right, my Lakota Sioux. Let's give them a little encouragement, guys. Come on. <laughs> exactly. All right. Who wants to go first? Um, we're the Lakota Sioux. So the Lakota Sioux lived in teepees, which served as their tent. They allowed them to be hunting, and they could leave in a less than an hour. So their teepees were 24 feet high, twice the size of a regular teepee. These teepees were primarily made out of buffalo hide to protect them from wind, rain, snow, and etc. Most of their diet consisted of meat. They liked buffalo, elk, and deer because, because they provided the biggest amount of meat when they cooked in pots or dried and pounded into pemmican. That's a type of beef jerky. And the Lakota sometimes collected chokeberries, fruit, and potatoes for food. They both hunted and farmed, but their primary source came out from hunting. They followed buffalo herds and used the meat and animal products for food, clothes, tools, and shelter. They also ate fish, snakes, turkey, and duck. The Lakota Sioux used a form of money called wampum. It is like what the Mingo said, it's just beads on a string put together to form designs. Today, one wampum is worth about $2,200, but back then it was worth however much, however it was worth to, to you. Um, and so back then it would normally be traded for stuff like, uh, for stuff like clothes and meat and all that sort of stuff. Some things, some things the Lakota Sioux made are birch bark canoes as well as dugout canoes. They used these to travel over rivers a safer way. Still, they traveled over land most of the time. They also made little travois. A travois is a type of drag sled. And then they got horses from the Europeans and became expert riders. Uh, games, um, games from the Lakota Sioux um, include bull roarer and cactus buffalo. Those are some games for boys. Um, some games for girls include the plum, plum pit game and the game of bulls. The plum pit game was um, a game where you would soak, dry, and mark different plum, plum pits with symbols, and then two people would sit opposite each other. One person would throw five plum pits in the air, and then the other person would have to catch all of them. And even then, you would have to land them in a certain order with certain patterns, and then you had to get up to 100 points to win. The Lakota Sioux uh, war commonly wore deerskins or buffalo hide. The women wore long deerskin or elk skin. The men wore uh, breech clothes with leggings and buckskin shirts. When the weather was bad, they w uh, wore buffalo hide uh, robes to protect themselves from the wind and the weather. They wore uh, moccasins on their feet to keep them to keep their uh, feet warm. The clothes were often decorated with uh, elaborate beadwork as a decoration. Okay. 
The Lakota warriors used bows and arrows, spears, tomahawks, and buffalo hide shields. Hunters would use snares when the Lakota men would hunt buffalo. They would often set controlled fires to herd animals into tra uh, traps or, or over cliffs. The tomahawks would be used for hand-to-hand -hand combat. It could also be thrown by a short distance and used as a tool. The men hun were hunters and warriors in which they were responsible for feeding and defending their families. The men were commonly chiefs, genders, um, could take place in storytelling, music, art, and tradition, medicine. The women were in, in charge of taking care of the home. They would also clean and cook. The women would build the house too. They would have to drag the heavy posts wherever the, the tribe moved. The children would play with each other, go to school, and help out around the house. Many of the Lakota children would also go fishing and hunting with their fathers. They would also play in bands. They would uh, have more chores than playtime. They, they would also have dolls with, to play with for the girls. The Lakota Sioux were polytheistic, meaning they believed in more than one god. Um, the, the, the Lakota Sioux religion was very important to them because it was their reason for why they were there. So if they didn't have the religion, they would basically have no point of life. Um, they believe that when the creator made the earth, he breathed life into the earth so that every living and moving thing that can move and live on its own would, would have an equal soul as everybody, everything else. So that's why they would treat others, everything else with respect. The sun dance was the most important dance slash ceremony practiced by the Lakota Sioux. It was a time of renewal. It was a time of renewal for the natives, and it would take place four days long, and then all the dancers, they would have to stare up at the sun while they danced. So if you were dancing for hours, you'd have to stand, stare up at the sun for hours. Um, and normal, sometimes there would be self-sacrificers, but those were very, very rare. Um, the Lakota Sioux had many instruments. Some of their instruments were the dance wand, whistle, cording flute, and the frame drum. The cord of flute was traditionally uh, used to sway the affections of a woman. And uh, however, the instrument was played by the both men and women. The dance wand would be had bells on the end of it, so you moved it around, and the peaceful bells would ring in the ring in dances. There are some instruments used by the Lakota Sioux. The Lakota Sioux lived in North Dakota and South Dakota. It is also known as the Great Sioux Nation. Descendants from their inhabitants were divided into three major groups. Lakota, they lived in Trenton, West Dakota, the Nakato, uh, Yankton, Central Dakota, and Dakota, uh, Senti, Eastern Dakota. They would reside near sacred Black Hills of South Dakota. The Lakota Sioux and white settlers did not get along very well. From the 1860s to the 1870s, the Lakota Sioux and the settlers constantly had Native American wars. Eventually, the Sioux had to come with a treaty to the Americans, and they had their own reservation sort of thing. But um, they kind of had a certain section of the, of the United States. Um, but eventually, uh, this guy named Custer, he, he wanted some gold that was in the Lakota Sioux Nation, and he had to, and then he led him and his miners down to where the Lakota were, and eventually Custer figured out that they were probably going to have a war, so he led, so he led some of his troops over a side of a hill, and he thought that there were going to be like a couple hundred Native Americans on the other side of the hill, but there were actually a couple thousand, so his army just got demolished. Here's the, um, flag symbol for the Battle of Little Bighorn. That's what the battle was called. And eventually, the rest of the U.S. came and fought the Lakota Sioux. So the Lakota Sioux were very, very outnumbered.
and they were also outsmarted. And then so they were eventually drived from the land and had to move to another reservation in North Dakota. One famous person of the Lakota Sioux is Sitting Bull. He was considered one of the best Sioux leaders of all time. He was a holy man of the Yupakpa Lakota who led the tribe when the Indians resisted the U.S. politics. When he was a child and a young adult, he was considered a skilled warrior. His father gave him his name, which means the buffalo bull who sits down. He presented an eagle feather with, that he wore on his head. Famous person from the Lakota Sioux is Red Cloud. Red Cloud was a leader and the war chief. War Cloud's father died when he was young, and he was raised by Oglala headman Smoke, his mother's uncle. He was a very skilled hunter and fighter, which is why he was such a great war leader. He was the first chief to win a war against the United States, but also was the last. This, who, this is who. Crazy Horse um, was another very famous Lakota Sioux warrior. Crazy Horse was born in the Black Hills, South Dakota in 1841. His name was originally Horsehair because of his curly hair. Later in his life, he helped develop and he helped the, in the Native American War by being a decoy and leading 80 soldiers into a trap. Crazy Horse participated in the Battle of Little Bighorn. Lieutenant Custer led his troops down into the Indian country and where he was led into another trap later on. Eventually, eventually the U.S. had to come down and had a lot of wars with the Native American tribes. Eventually, Crazy Horse had to surrender and move to a reservation. The officers thought that he said that he would not stop fighting instead of surrendering when he was just wanting to talk to the other officers. Um, Crazy Horse requested to see some officers, but was instead led to a cell. One of the officers was a Native American who betrayed, was another Native American who was Crazy Horse's friend, but he had now betrayed the Native Americans. So Crazy Horse pulled out a concealed knife and tried to use, uh, tried to stab the traitor. The other officer stabbed him with a sword, which later led to Crazy Horse's death. I am very impressed with how much you guys know about your tribe. Truly, I am. Um, but these um, three groups were so wonderful. Um, there is an unfortunate situation that we have to get through all of these in about 45 minutes. <laughs> so you can go to PE. Um, so my advice um, is pick maybe like the three or four titles that... Again, don't read it, but if you want to pick a three or four titles from each of your boards um, that are kind of the most interesting, um, it's okay if your famous people are kind of random. It's okay. If you, you don't have to say everything. Does that make sense? So try if you can. This might be good news for you. To try to keep it under four minutes, just try. We'll see. If we're late to PE, we're late to PE. Yes, Mr. Allen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. Great job, guys. Let's give them one more round of applause. That was impressive. Y'all knew a lot about the Lakota Sioux. All right. Crow people, you're up. I'm so excited for this one. This one, y'all nailed it. All right. Can I have your attention? Who wants to go first? All right. You got it, Cameron. Okay. Their location? They lived in the Yellowstone River Valley, which runs through Montana. Um, they were a nomadic tribe, and they migrated east along the river. About 75% today live in the uh, new Crow Indian Reservation, and almost all the people that live there speak Apafsaloke as their first language. The Indian Reservation today is located in Montana, and after they split up, uh, most of them became nomadic after. Uh, the Crow tribe had many ceremonies, uh, one of them w of which was the tobacco ceremony in which they worshipped uh, one of their main crops, which was tobacco. 
their second ceremony was the sun dance in which to worship the sun, which was one of their gods. They played games, including some modern games that you might realize and recognize, such as tag. But other games they played were stickball, which is pretty similar to modern day baseball, except for the bat, which was made out of uh, usually pine wood and they used leather balls instead of rubber. So their food was, or they often ate elk, deer, bison, and all that. Um, the men often hunted while the women grew crops and cooked the food. A uh, woman also gathered herbs, fruits, vegetables, all those. Um, they also grew tobacco for one of their main foods. And they used horses to hunt buffalo, which made it way easier for them. Um, they used the animal hides for clothing uh, from the animals they killed, which were like bison and deer. The women kept their hair short while the men had their hair uh, down to their waist. Um, the female Indians had leggings made from bison and moccasins made from bison hides. And the headdresses they wore were traditionally made from eagle feathers. Housing. They originally lived in log houses, but then once the Europeans gave them horses, they decided to become a nomadic tribe so that way they could hunt bison more easily. And that's when they decided to move into teepees instead of the log houses. And that's basically all for housing. So uh, one of the famous people is Joe Medicine Crow. He um, was one of the last people from the Little Bighorn Battle from his tribe. He was also one of the last people that... Um, that spoke that language that lived in Montana and he like knew the whole entire alphabet and also he died recently about five years ago and he was 103 when he died. Um, so they were a nomadic tribe when they split up so they most of them were primarily hunters. Uh, their favorite things to hunt were deer, elk, and buffalo. Um, the women, they usually farmed the berries and crops, and most, most of their farmed crops were corn squash and tobacco. And this is like a kind of fun fact I found, but the women, if they were widows, they could ride into battle with the men. Nomadic. The crow was a semi-nomadic uh, tribe, which means they would stay in one place for most of the year, and then for the rest of the year, they'd live in teepees going and hunting, and they'd bring it back to the main settlement during some time of the year and stay there for the rest of the year. So for their history, the Crow tribe was not really treated well by the United States, but they made a deal with the Senate that they would be paid $1,000 every year for 50 years straight. Uh, the Senate didn't agree to that, so they uh, would pay fifty dollars or fifty thousand dollars for the next ten years, but it doesn't mean they'd get fifty thousand dollars every year. They would get five thousand dollars for the next ten years. And uh, most tribes did not agree with the deal, but the Crow tribe did. And uh, Plenty Coops said, "The land is not ours by treaty and not by chance." Um. So they, they had a lot of instruments, but uh, we're going to be talking about four. The first two instruments were the Shang Shaka Hada, which is called the dancing wand in English, and the whistle. The other two instruments were the uh, courting flute, which is in their language, Siyo Tanka, and the frame drum. The whistle was part of the music making, but not for extra musical effects, and the men used the courting flute to sway the affections of Money. Money was a fairly recent invention for the crow, only like very recently made when the Europeans came to America. 
uh, their money system was made out of copper, silver, and gold coins. And sometimes they'd be lopsided and be more of like lumps. So the Crow tribe gods were Akbatadia, La Chica Bale, and Isaac Hawati. Uh, the Crow tribe often danced in the rituals they performed. The Crow tribe worshipped the sun as well. The Crow tribe believed that all things in the world have spirits or souls, and also they had a ceremony worshipping tobacco. For some of their creations, they would use long wooden poles and uh, buffalo hide to make their teepees. Uh, they also used white sunbleached buffalo skins for their clothing. Um, some other natural resources they had were coal, oil, and gas, among other ones. They weren't that different from other Native American tribes, and they usually acted a lot like them. And then, uh, this is a 3D print. These two are 3D printed, and I tried to make it look like it was in the middle of a hunt. Um, this is what their log house looked like before they became nomadic, and this is what the teepees were. Very good, guys. Round of applause for the crow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Navajo people, y'all ready? And remember, guys, you don't have to go through every title if you don't want to. Um, but truly, so impressed. So impressed. Okay, who's going first? Me. All right, Val. Yo. Um. Um, the Navajo lived in houses called Hogan's. And it's like right here. You probably can't see it, but it's made out of logs and it has a dome roof with a carpet draped over and their door would always face east so they could see the sunrise and you could um they could fit 15 to 25 people in it um they mainly um they mainly ate beans squash and corn because they mainly uh grew those crops and they also ate sheep rabbit and deer they also herded a bunch of sheep and they also um they also made the wool into their clothing and it helped them with the winter season when it got really cold and uh religion the navajo believed in four main gods they believed in the god of the rain the god of the evening and west they believed in the god of the sun and the god of the wind uh um, they believed that everything was created for a purpose whether it be good or evil and humans were meant to keep the balance between it uh, for rituals, they had six main rituals, which were used to keep the balance between good and evil, as well as um, uh, give, bring good luck on a hunt or the healing of another. And music and instruments, they uh, used hollowed out wood as a drum right here and put um, a rug type thing over it. And they beat the drum while a man sang in a low voice and sang uh, kind of a chant. And for games, the Navajo played many different games, and some of them were meant to teach spiritual significance, like the shoe game was meant to teach uh, uh, younger kids about the dispute between the night and day uh, creatures. And territory, the Navajo lived in many places throughout history. Uh, they mainly lived in the Southwest, um, like um, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado. But um, they're originally part of the Athabascan tribe, which is based out of Alaska. And um, one of, when the, the Athabascans split up, uh, the Navajo were one of the uh, main tribes that came out of it. Uh, they had many jobs in their society. So men had uh, hunting and being in politics. And then the women mostly stayed at home, tended the livestock, gathered materials. And the children took care of most of the chores at home. So they, and they didn't have much of money, really, but if they had to pay for things, they just used sheep, not wool, just sheep. And then the Navajo made rugs, blankets, jewelry, and other, many other things. They, they learned how to do this from the, the Pueblo people. They cost a lot back then, and they still do today. Um, like many Native American tribes, the Navajo people lived on reservations. They gave up their land with a treaty in 1868. They were forced out of their, their original home by the U.S. Army. They didn't want fighting, but it happened anyway. And the United States won, and they were forced to a reservation in Arizona. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>
Good job, Navajo. <laughs> um, okay, we got the Mohawks next. All right, Austin and group. Have fun. <laughs> uh, this is the Mohawk tribe. Uh, they lived in southern Canada and northern New York. And since they were living, they had to have a house. They built longhouses, which are just long wooden buildings with, uh, with leather covering them as like a hide. They had these headdresses. The headdresses were worn by the warriors in battle to intimidate their enemies. Oh, what they used for currency is a shell for like most transaction and trades for like food and clothing. The famous person in our group is St. Kateri. Yes, we have a saint. So, saint. Um, the foods that they had were, well, they hunted bison and also fished, but they also farmed herbs and berries. Wait, no, they scavenged that. They farmed multiple other fruits and vegetables. Basically, yeah, that's it. Yeah, they use these Mohawk Indian currency shells. Nice, cool, very cool. Good job, Mohawks. Did they, this is, might be a dumb question, but did they have, did they wear Mohawks, Austin? Like, did they cut their hair like that? Austin. Do you know where the word, like the term mohawk referring to the hairdo, come, do you, did that come from them? Obviously, so they wore their hair like that? Very fun. There you go. There you have it, people. All right, Blackfoot. Um, the Blackfoot were a nomadic tribe and they were in Canada and then they were forced reservations in Montana and Oklahoma. Um, they wore breech cloth, leggings, and shirts made out of buffalo skin, deer skin, and like rabbits. And they were thick robes to keep warm in the winter. What the men and women did. The men would usually hunt for food and build the houses. And the women would usually take care of the children, um, clean and cook the food. For the money, they traded beads, bracelets, and copper to get pans um, and jewelry. Um, things they made, they made art and they made quills. They made medicine bags out of cloths. Where they live? They would usually live in a teepee made out of buffalo hide. They would get the buffalo hide from Buffalo Pound and Buffalo Jump. Um, a famous person is James Welch. He was an author and a Blackfoot Indian. He was born in Montana on a reservation and went to school. He is a poet and a writer. Um, for my craft, I made um, a game they played, and it's when they shoot an arrow into something made out of yarn like a hoop. And the famous person I did was Chief Crowfoot. He was against war, and he he discouraged warfare among the tribes, and he did not like when people would fight with the white settlers, and he liked peace. For my craft, I made a teepee made out of buffalo hide. In the environment, they used bark, wood, and berries, and hides to make their um, teepees, and they would paint colorful designs on them. Um, for the foods they ate, they ate deer, elk, bison, and rabbits. They made a special mixture called pemmican, which is made from bison meat, uh, berries, and fat. They only ate it on special days. One of the famous people I looked up was Akku Maki. He was chief of the Old Feathers Band in 1820. 
He had 400 personal followers, and he is one of the head chiefs with Crowfoot. For their ceremonies, they would have one event, and they called the Sundance. They would um, pray, offer sacrifices, and sing. And it lasts a day and a half, and they would sing a hundred songs that are all different. Um, by the U.S., they were treated uh, for hospital with hospitality toward the Americans, and they were per they prevented British, French, and Americans from trading goods with them. And the bison were almost extinct because they were shooting them. And that's it. Very nice work. Very nice work. Hey, what is this exactly here? What is this craft? Is this a teepee? Hey, Violet. Is this a teepee? This is the painted teepee? Cool. Oh, okay. All right, Chinook. All right. So the tribe that we picked is the Chinook tribe, a tribe that lived in the northwest coast of around Washington, Oregon, if you guys are wondering. Uh, uh, for, like, homes and clothes, they'd usually wear... The men would... For, for clothing, the men wouldn't uh, wear too much, or a breech clout right, right there. Not, not no. A uh, breech clout is a one-piece garment that is mostly made out of cloth, has a belt, and a cape-type thing. Uh, the woman wears skirts uh, that were made out of bark and grass, not very comfortable. So for, they built uh, long houses for their buildings, like uh, some other tribes. And they'd use uh, red cedar, uh, red cedar to make it, and they'd look like that. So yes, very interesting. Uh, they also were prolific traders, as it says here. Uh, and they often traver traveled across rivers throughout uh, the country to trade people. And uh, they were known countrywide for trading all over, like from the Great Plains and the other side of the country. And so, so some games that they played, uh, they, games and music, uh, they had a lot of music, so, yeah. They'd do like, I'm not good at this. Uh, have, oh my so, they would, uh, one example are songs of greeting, where they would play a song when someone just kind of walked into the village that they didn't know. So, when British explorers came near the tribe, they did not expect that. So, uh, that was one of the better experiences of the settlers. And uh, a lot of things that they like to do is that the children and the fathers like to go fishing and use stuff like this to catch fish. And also the children play with each other because social skills are required. They also played a game like, a bit like lacrosse called Coho, which is popular among teenagers. So, yeah. Some of the work both genders did was trade. Trading was very important to them because that's how they got most of their food, materials, and clothing. The Chinook men were mostly fishermen and hunters. They had to go out into war, and only men could fight. The men also mainly carved canoes, but only women gathered the plants, herbs, and clams because that was the easiest job, and they couldn't get hurt from doing that. And the tribe was known as the Chinook. The tribe was known as the Chinook. Not all settlers. Oh my god, I can't read. <laughs> my, all the men had a lot of work to do, but the children mostly just watched them and tried to get smarter. Both of the genders, along with the children at time, took part in trading goods. The Chinook men tribes would mainly go after fish, because they lived on the coast, and women gathered plants only. So they, um, 
a famous person uh, was Com Kinley. He was a famous chief, and he helped Lewis and Clark on their expedition on the Louisiana Purchase. And so uh, they helped the U.S. Uh, they received them hospitab hospitably uh, when they needed help, and they helped them in wars and stuff like that. And they, um, they believed in one great spirit and other animal deities. They would, fe they would hold feasts for these spirits in hopes that they would appear. Some of these animals and salmon, some of these animals are salmon and beer. The tribe would occasionally hold rituals for the deities as well. The Chinook had many rituals and rites that they focused on. First, they were very uh, the first, first there was the very important fit, first salmon rite, a ritual in which each group welcomed at the annual, annual salmon run. Another important religious ritual was the vision quest. This ordeal was undertaken by all male and some female youths in order to acquire a guardian spirit that would give them hunting, fishing, and healing, and other helpful powers. These guardian spirits also gave the youth and youth gave the youth the youth good luck and taught them songs and dances. The clothing that the Chinook wear isn't very diverse compared to the other tribes. It, in fact, men didn't wear uh, much in the way of a top and the women wore skirts made out of cedar and grass. During rainy seasons, they would wear clo cloaks to keep dry. While, while it was cold, they would wear warmer clothes such as moccasins, on their feet and fur robes. In the summer, they didn't didn't change much about their usual clothing. Usually, cl usual clothing. And we did uh, we did their Chinook flag with uh, two of their tools. So yeah. All right. Good job. Good job. Can you turn it off? Oh. Hello. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Mohavers. Good job, Chinook. Um, our tribe is the Mojave tribe. Um, so where they lived is they lived in the Mojave Desert um, in southwestern Arizona and southeastern California. Um, it was more than 25,000 square miles. Um, and the temp was usually a mild climate where they lived. Um, for the food, um, they grew, hunted, and had some recipes. Um, they grew corn, beans, and pumpkins, and the men hunted rabbits while the while the women um, gathered nuts and fruits and berries. Um, and they, when they had meat, they either roasted it over the fire or grilled it on hot stones. Clothing. So the women would wear bark knee length skirts and cloak, cloaks at night. The men wore loincloths woven from grass or bark fibers. Like the women, they wore rabbit skin cloaks at night. They usually were barefoot and rarely wore their sandals. They would also paint their faces and bodies sometimes for special ceremonies. Religion. They believed in the supreme creator and their dreams were considered the source of all the power. Their creator is Madavilia, who gave the people their names and commandments. His son, Mastamaho, gave them the river and taught them to plant. And they used the plant Doara for religious sacraments and they followed the age-old customs of it. Aha, cave. Um, their famous people was Pete Lambert. He was uh, the great chieftain when the Mohav nation surrendered to the United States troops in 1859. And he was, uh, uh, once he died, he, uh, he, once he died, the ancient system of, elect of electing new great chieftain ended, and I, I lived in 1814 to 1874. He was a me minister between the Mohav and the USA. He was one of the first Mohav leaders to speak English. And um, houses, they, they lived in a attached house in the summer, and it was made of um, wood frame covered in grass or, br or brush. These houses were called the ramads. They had frames made of cottonwood, pole, that they had made for cottonwood and pole, cottonwood poles. 
Across the top, across the top of the frame, they would put arrowed branches to make the roof flat. They made this house open-sided so the breeze could cool them in, in the hot summer. They also had a winter house, and it was also, it was made of mud and um, grass, sticks, and bushes. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys our crafts. This is a representation of a summer house. Um, uh, this is a clay pot. They would trade it for stuff. No. <laughs> and um, this was the this is a farm of what they ate, which was pumpkin, beans, and corn. Yeah, you got that great. That's great. That's awesome. It was not good. It's so good. Oh. They did a great job. <laughs> I love this house. I don't know if I'd live in it, but I'm impressed. All right, Algonquin. If you guys want to shift to see the boards better. I will allow it. If you guys want to shift, when we, when we go over there, we can move as we go. Okay, go ahead. The Algonquin tribe ate corn, beans, and squash, and when they weren't in war, they would trade the food for more stuff. The Algonquin people did not usually own money. They didn't really have a money system. They would just trade like their fruits and other stuff for money. Traditionally, clothing, for the Algonquin consisted of tunics, lo lo loins, and cloth, and leggings. The Algonquin people did not usually live in teepees. They lived in settled little huts, kind of like these right here. They lived in Quebec, Canada, and they lived there for many years. It's a mystery how they all died out or moved, but most people think they left or the United States like kicked them out. Like many other tribes, the Algonquin people believed in the spiritual and spiritual world and interacted with the physical world. They believed Kichi Mentu created and inhabited the entire universe and and ruled like the animals and the humans and everything. The Algonquin used many instruments in their culture. One instrument, or yeah, one instrument they used was a flute, like the picture right there. And the, they did not really like the United States because they disrespected the Algonquin women, and they got really mad at them. And eventually, they had to move to a um, reserve or reservation in Ontario, Canada. Some famous Algonquin people, one of them is Tessuat. He was known as the Algonquin of the island. The Algonquin won a war against the Iroquois. It was on this occasion that a French explorer met Chief Tessuat for the first time. Tessuat was one of the most major people in winning the war against the Iroquois. Tessuat was one of the most important Algon Algonquin Indians that we know of. Another famous person is Gordon Brainerd. He is the Algonquin medicine man, and he has the nickname of Fox Running because he is always running around and talking to people. Gordon completed a vision quest to meet his spirit, to meet his spirit guide on the road to become a spiritual leader. He is French, Canadian, and English bloodlines. He is a spiritual leader of the century. In the Algonquin tribe, the men had most of the power, did more jobs, and were considered the head of the family. The main ta their main task was to, was to retrieve food, fish, and pretty much make sure their tribe was in order. The women's main jobs were to get berries and build the houses, again, like these things. Um, some g one game that they played was lacrosse, but they called it kabucha. They played it every day for five hours, depending on your age. This game was played by passing a ball to other members of your team with a net attached to a wooden stick. Some Al the Algonquin people, they made their weapons and their houses out of pretty much all the natural things around them and they hunted by using bows, arrows, and axes. And they made their boats out of animal bones and hides. Um, we made these two houses. They wore these little moccasin shoes, and the totem pole was like different designs according to their ceremonies, and they hunted with the bow and 
stuff. So. You make the bow um, she, she made the sheath. She made, she made the thing to hold the pout, the arrows, the sheath. All right, Poe Hattons. Where's Mr. Gage? Our tribe is the Powhatan tribe. They, their clothes involved a lot around their weather. Men wore fur cloaks, loose sleeves, and, and leggings. Mocassins were worn on trips into the forest. They had clothes made from animal skin that the woman w made. Um, they made pottery and decorated clothes with beads. Um, they also have tattoos on their bodies. The woman planted and harvested corn. They also made fishing lines. The Powhatans believed in gods and spirits. They had two major gods. Well, one was a spirit. Um, I think uh, a hon, creator of creator and giver of life, and Oki, the evil spirit. Both gods served a very important purpose to the Powhatans. Um, one famous person from the Powhatan tribe is Wahun Shun Kok. Uh, he was known as Chief Powhatan. Um, the chief's daughter was Pocahontas. And then uh, one more person, John Rolfe, was Pocahontas' uh, husband. The Powhatan Indians lived in the eastern, eastern Virginia. They lived in the northeast region. Some Powhatan Indians still live there now. Other Powhatan Indians were driven north to Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So a Powhatan house is called a Yankee. <laughs> um, their houses are made from um, natural materials. Young saplings were used to create a frame for the house. Um, the houses are actually covered with bark strips and mats made out of animal skin so here's our house and um this is like the animal skin the mats and it keeps them warm in the winter keeps them warm in so yeah. another famous person was john smith he was very important to um the jamestown settlers um for his connection to the powhatans which he made when the powhatans captured him in 1607 um but jamestown and powhatans alliance broke when Powhatans realized that Jamestown was making alliance with other tribes. Um, but between the conflict between um, like um, Jamestown and Powhatans, John Smith and Pocahontas had a romantic relationship. But it ended when um, John went back to Jamestown and they never saw each other again. Um, Pocahontas was a Native American woman born around 1595. Uh, her nickname, uh, uh, Pocahontas, means playful one. And, uh, hold up. Where am I? Um, oh, that's it. Um, these are the clothes that the women and men wore. Um, so they did farm a lot of food. Um, so they eat beans, corn, fish, and they like scavenge um, berries and fresh vegetables. Um, they also gather oysters and clams. They get a lot of their food from farming. They dried out their crops to save them for the winter. Um, they use bow and arrows to kill large game. They killed the white-tailed deer a lot. And this is the farm. And Here's the fish that they killed. Nice. Good job, guys. Well done, well done. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. All right, Powhatans. We are skipping the Walla Walla for now. Yes. Now for the Inuit. <laughs> Give them a round of applause. Come on, guys, be encouraging. 
All right. Take it away, you two. <laughs> we did the Inuit. The Inuit people lived in the Alaska, Canada, Siberia, and sometimes Greenland. So they lived in a very cold environment. So they had supplies like snow and ice. So for their houses, they built igloos. And yeah. <laughs> the Inuit people's religion was Ananism. Ananism is a belief that any a thing, object, or person <laughs> has a spirit. For their food, they also lived kind of by the ocean. So the food they ate included walruses, whales, seals, but they also ate rabbits. And then down here, you can see like mulch and sticks, and they used that to cook and kind of make fires to cook the animals. So. For their clothing, they used thick, fab warm fabric and thick coating because it was cold. So they played games that were called knuckle hop, airplane planking and foot racing and all of these games required balance control and like skills and that would help to be a successful hunter our famous person is irene verdard she was born in anchorage anchorage district properly known as one of the most popular cities in alaska she was born on july 22nd 1967 and is descended from inuit pat yupik inuit cree and metis when she was little, she participated in ceremonies and ritual. She okay, and then we have, for our crafts, we have the igloo, we have some of the animals they ate, and then we have the sticks and the mulch for the fire and for what they cook. Yeah. yeah. Yay! <laughs> We're all very proud of you. Okay. <laughs> all right, Creek! This is a very pink situation. I like it. Who's going first? Isabella. Um, um, some of the important people we have were um, Brims. I don't know if you can see him. He's a miskos, which means um, a chief. And some of the important things he did was he in 1710, he threatened to uh, taught, um, to cut the relationships with the Span Spain, France, and Great Britain. And this is Tamachi, another great leader to the Creek. He's an important figure in the early history of Georgia. And this is uh, Malachi. He is the second son of uh, Brims, and he also led the Creek like his father with a very politic way. Um, for their houses, they had like a, a, a wide variety of houses, but that's one of their houses. Yeah, it had a lot of earthwork, as in like grass, trees, bark and stuff. And they had a lot of mud on it. It was kind of like a glue. It's like the stuff wouldn't like fall apart. And then, yeah. And then their food, they ate a lot of corn, like a lot, a lot, a lot of corn. And they had a wide variety of meats as in like game, bison. They didn't eat as much as, much as bison as a lot of other tribes did, but they ate a lot of bison. And here's some corn. So some of the work they did, the men were hunters and fishers. They used bows and arrows for hunting and spears and nets for um, fishing and hooks. They also went to war to protect their families. The women did most of the farming, harvesting crops, corn, bean, and squash. The children did most things may, may, um, children do. They played, helped out. They went to school, helped around the house. And many of the children liked going hunting and fishing with their fathers. That's it. Okay, the Ute. All right, y'all getting a little rowdy. Pull it together. I'm waiting. The quicker you're quiet. 
boys in the back. Thank you. All right, take it away, guys. Okay, so we did the ute, and the men wore breech cloths with leather leggings and buskin shirts, and the woman wore ladies' dress or a warrior shirt that was fringed and decorated with beadwork, shells, elk teeth, and elk teeth. And they made flutes with beads on them, with bead designs. And they made children's toys or trinkets. The materials they used were, they used plants as materials and they used Mother Earth. And for their religion, they believed in shamanism, which is based on nature healing. And they lived in western Colorado and eastern Utah. They, the men hunted deer, elk, buffalo, and antelope. And the women gathered roots, pine nuts, seeds, and fruits. They also enjoyed eating bugs. Uh, Americans and U2, or ET relations. The U2, or the U.S. gave the U2 tribe a massive reservation in exchange for the Rockies to the United States, but the U.S. did not go by the treaty and assassinated the UDs. Every day, new people come to Colorado after the Civil War, Gold Rush, and many other huge events and pushed the UT tribe out farther and farther. So in conclusion, the United States treated them poorly. Um, ceremonies. There are two main ceremonies the UT tribe held. The first was a bear dance. Um, so um, during March, the start of spring, when the bears come out, um, dancers and singers come outside and dance and sing. The second ceremony is Sundance. They would go, they would do this at, in late spring or summer. They would sacrifice someone during the ceremony. ceremony. Um, that's it. Hey boys, what's going on? Oh, you ready? All right, Wampanoag. Hold on, your your classmates aren't being the most respectful. That's that's more like it, Gabby. A silent fist bump. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the Wampanoag tribe. Um, their houses were usually huts, typically made out of bark or buffalo hides. Their clothing, for their clothing, they wore leather leggings and tops that were made out of animal fur. Um, for their ceremonies, they had a lot of ceremonies, but the most important was the first Thanksgiving, which they celebrated with the pilgrims. And they also had a strawberry picking festival, which they did in the summer. Um, they had three famous people. The three famous people are Squanto, Samosa, and Medicom. Medicom was a chief for two tribes, including this one. Squanto was an interpreter and guide for the pilgrims when they came and helped with the first Thanksgiving. And Samosa was the person, was an ambassador and interpreter also for the first Thanksgiving for the pilgrims too. And uh, for their games, it was they for a game they had something kind of like tic tac toe. It's called uh, knots and crosses. Anyone can play it: boys, girls, men, women, any age. Um, and yeah, um, what they ate? They ate like woodchuck, uh, skunk, rabbit, and deer. And, um, the, but their favorite food was um, deer. So. Um, 
And they ate uh, modern things like watermelon and uh, sunflower seeds and artichoke after the settlers came. And, and what they made, they made uh, drums from drums from turtle shells, and they would use rubber mallets to beat the turtle shells that were filled with water. That's it. And this was an example of like their huts and yeah. Yeah, they were made of bark, sticks, animal hides, grass. And yeah, I hope you all got a chance to come and look at this uh, design here. These little stick people are really great. This is great. All right, Cherokee. What do you say? We did the Cherokee. So the Cherokee lived in North Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia, and they, they are not nomadic people. They're special ceremonies. They have seven main ones, and they all take place around the new moon. For their games, they play basket dice, uh, stick ball, and, and stick ball is kind of like lacrosse a little bit. Their mus they have a variety of music from bluegrass to rock and roll. And what, what they believed in is when they hunted for food, what they would do, if they hunted too much for their family, they believed that the deer god would be very upset with them. One famous person is Sequoia. He like wrote their written language. And Will Rogers was a famous actor. Another famous person is, well, my grandpa, he's not that famous, William Lowry. Um, the, the Americans treated them, they had treaties with them, but by the 1835s, most of them were gone, and they made them move to new land around Oklahoma. So the men worked, and they hunted, and they like cut down trees for their land and stuff. And the women were like the head of the household, and they did everything for the house. The kids kind of did what both their parents did. They didn't really do anything that different. Their houses, they had three houses. They had a summer house, which was not as like, it didn't keep the house warm. And then the winter house was covered in like seven inches of mud. And then they had a house for all the sick people so that they did not spread the disease. So for weapons, they made um, out of deer antlers, they would make spears, arrowheads, and axes. Uh, for money, they used wampum. They would um, pierce a hole in it and wear it as a belt instead of putting it in their bag, and they'd use it for trading. Um, in crafts, we made uh, dream catchers. They would put it over their bed to catch all the bad dreams. And then what they ate, they would hunt like turkey, rabbit, and deer, and even bears. And they would make out of them like stews and uh, uh, cornbread. And then that's it. Nice. Good job. <laughs> I feel like you could buy this at the store. And this might be better than the one you buy at the store. Good job, ladies. All right, Oneida, come on up. Y'all need to just go. You got it. <laughs> we're we're going to do this. Not the currency here in the Howl America. Just, I hate all of this. You're starting in the beginning. All right, so the Oneida tribe, where they lived? They lived in Wisconsin, New York, around where Greenland is. They actually had one of the biggest um, territories of any of the tribes around six million acres, but since America wanted to spread its freedom, they now have around 16,000. What they wore, they wore, um, pant the men wore pants with long leggings and the women wore wraparound skirts with shorter leggings. They were a non-nomadic tribe and 
the Oneida women were in charge of farming, taking care of the family, and property disputes. The men, however, were in charge of trading, fighting in the wars, and hunting. So, yeah. What they ate. Um, the Oneida woman, again, planted crops such as corn, beans, and squash. <laughs> They had squash. They had hunting. Um, the men went out on hunting trips and hunted elk, deer, and all of the such. The materials that they used to make their tools were pine wood um, and oak bark. They um, and they made tools such as fishing rods, spears, clubs, and shields. And their houses were longhouses, which I'm pretty sure could fit about 60 people. So the entire tribe. Um, so um, a famous person from the Oneida tribe is Tyano J. <laughs> Jen. Um, she is also known as Two Kettles Together. And she uh, carried and delivered messages to the Patriots. And she is known for fighting in the Battle of Oris Kenny during the American Revolution War. She fought alongside her husband, Han Yeri, and her son, Cornelius, with two pistols. Uh, another famous person is uh, Joanne Shinoda. She is a singer, a composer, and a acoustic guitarist based in the U in the United States. She is a member of the Wolf Clan. The <laughs> yeah. Their music. Uh, the United. The Oneida uh, surprisingly have several different genres of music. <laughs> Some of these genres include ceremonial songs, social songs, and children's songs. Their music is very ryth rhythmic, rhythmic and has lots of uh, lively singing, like a lot of people. Um, this, the, the instruments that they use were mostly drums and flutes. Um, the boys use flutes to try to woo the women over, you know. Yeah. The drums, however, were filled with water, giving them a very different sound to them. Games. They actually invented a lacrosse. They played lacrosse. Um, they call it the creator's game when they play it. Playing lacrosse is like a right to elders, I'm guessing. I don't really know what that means, but... It's a sport, but it's also like a religious ceremony. And now lacrosse is played throughout the world. So. Religion. The Oneida were pretty uncreative with their religion. They mainly stuck with the Iroquois religion until the settlers came. They converted a band of Oneida to Christianity, although there were still lots of differences, and was called the Second Christian Party. The two groups were far from united. Uh, celebration. The Oneida tribe celebrated a corn harvest. When corn was ready to harvest, the Oneida tribe held a celebration while harvesting everything. Corn. They held this celebration because they thought corn was the best gift from their creator. The Oneida gathered corn to prepare for the long winter. And yeah, that's Oneida. All right, last, but certainly not least, we have Walla Squared.
we had the Walla Walla tribe, and the Walla Walla first lived in Columbia River, but now they're in Oregon, right? Yeah. Okay, so their food, they ate things. They found berries, such as strawberries, huckleberries, which are called blueberries, and blackberries. They also ate fish, such as salmon, like you got your little salmon. You got your rainbow trout, you got your shad, which, why would you want to eat shad, but they did. You got your, um, what's it called again, carp, that's what it is. And they hunt animals, such as bison, deer, and elk. No, this is not a monster head. This is a deer skull. Um, the Walla Walla used wampum for money, and they lived in teepees, and um, they used to have over 72. Um, they went from 4 million acres of land to 72,000 in the span of 10 years. Um, because of Manifest Destiny, and um, a famous person from our tribe is Chief Yellowbird, and um, that's it. What thing? Oh, um, so, maybe. Um, so, we have a... We have our river. Yeah. We have our river. It's a little canoe. Um, with the canoe. It's very modern. It's amazing. Um, so we have. Oh, so all these fish are Swedish fish, the candy, and um, they, it's to represent like the they're one of their main food sources, and as well as the buffalo and manifest destiny, with the settlers um, hunting all the buffalo down, and. Um, there's a campsite, and there's an example of one of their teepees. All right, so this group has a little surprise, which I feel like you guys definitely earned. So when you get your Swedish fish, when you get it, shh, you and your group um, will pick up your board. I think we need to clean this up probably this hour because I think we have professional development in here. Is that right? Do you know if it's in here? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to take a picture of all the boards first. Um, so while you're doing that, I'm going to take photos and then you're going to get your board. Okay. All right. Good job, guys. <laughs>